We're going to take a look at the assembly updates now for 2016. And the first of those is built on some functionality that has been included in previous releases. So we'll take a quick look. If I select two faces, I can add a mate using the Quick Mates toolbar towards the bottom. This has been extended for 2016 with the introduction of the Profile Center Mate onto this toolbar. So we can grab it directly from there. Also, if we do a circular mate using the Profile Center, the Lock Rotation button finds its way onto the Quick Mate toolbar as well. Some other introductions to that are if we control select three faces, we get the symmetric mate. And if we add a fourth into that set, we can now add a width mate directly from there as well. A number of the improvements in 2016 are built on functionality from previous releases as well. So for example, here we have a boss feature on this particular component. And in 2015, if we remove the face that was used to make these concentric, uh, we could replace that failed mate uh, using a new dialog box. So we'll go ahead and we'll just switch the configuration to remove the face, causing a mate error. And if we just use our breadcrumbs feature to access the mate that's causing the problem here, we can select the missing mate reference and reapply it like so. And it will give us the option here to replace all other all other missing mate references to that face as well. So that was the 2015 improvement that we saw. As I said, that's been built on in 2016 to include uh, replacing missing mates across multiple instances of the same component. So we can see we've got three instances of this control knob within our assembly here. And using our new advanced select option to select identical components, I'm just going to change the configuration to cause a mate error across all three components. And we'll go ahead, again, using our breadcrumbs to replace the mate reference. So we'll choose the replacement face here. And again, we'll accept the, off, the option here. The difference here over 2015 is it replaces all the missing faces across the multiple instances of the components. So a real time saver. Another improvement we saw in previous releases with the, was the introduction of a tool called Temporary Fix and Group, which would allow us in situations like this, where we have multiple movements on components, to control them a little bit more effectively. It was an often overlooked tool in the last release, so it's now been included on the right-click menu. So we can access the tool, temporarily fix one of these components, and it will keep that one fixed while allowing us to move the other degrees of freedom in the assembly. We can also group components together from within this tool to allow them to move collectively as one. So as I said, just a small improvement there to bring that onto the right-click menu to make it more accessible to everyone, really. If we just window select these items here, you'll see it's selected a number of components within our feature tree. In previous releases, if we use the copy and paste functionality, it would only take one of those components. So now if I just use Control c Control v and paste those across, we can see we've got all instances of the components and also all the mates in between them. We'll just position this down just so you can see a little bit more effectively what's happened. So again, just using our quick mate toolbar here, we'll just position this with a width mate. And we can see now that the mates have copied across as well. So the copy and paste functionality will now include multiple components and any mates between those components as well. If we just switch over to another assembly here, we'll take a look at some other mating improvements and more functionality at assembly level. So if we go to the insert components dialog box and browse for a particular component here, we can now access the configuration that we want to use from that component directly from the insert components box. So making it much more easier for us to select the, com the configuration that we want at the point of insertion. When mating components of this type into an assembly, sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. We'll find that the component goes inside another. So for example, here, if I just start the mate tool and select the component, we can see that part has now gone inside our main assembly. 
so it becomes a little bit awkward for us to grab hold of that and position it. There is a cylindrical hole on that brass bushing that I'd like to make up with this grease port here. So new for 2016, the first component we select turns transparent, allowing us to see through the component to select the additional face that we need for mating. If we do the same operation here on this component, we're just going to select this cylindrical face here and mate it here. We'll see that that washer part goes inside the main yellow body there. If I just spin this round and select the face I want to mate it to, I can now access that face by grabbing through the transparent component to select it. So a much easier and faster workflow when mating components. Another commonly requested enhancement is the ability to show a component in a separate window while mating it. So here if we just select this sub-assembly, we can launch a component preview window directly from the shortcut menu. So you'll see the components that we've previewed have turned transparent in the main window, allowing selections to be easily made. And we can now grab hold of either from the transparent component or the component window, the mate tool, snap it into position, and you'll see we can rotate this component individually to make it much easier to grab the selections that we want. An exit preview is directly in the window for us as well. Virtual components are a great way to store components internal to an assembly and minimize files on disk. And now when making a subassembly virtual, we have additional options to make the subassembly and all its children component virtual as well. So if we select that here, you can see we can either make only the subassembly virtual or the subassembly and all child components virtual. We can also directly rename components from within the Feature Manager design tree as well. So here if I do a slow double click, we could rename that component. This is a temporary rename, so if we open the component in its own window, you'll see it's renamed in session. But if we save it, it gives us some warnings regarding the document containing references uh, that have been temporarily, temporarily renamed. If we want to update the where, ref, where used references for any other assemblies that component is used within. Another example of where copy and paste and some of the other new functionality can be used to its advantage is shown here. So we'll just use the component preview window for this element here. We'll select a face from this component here, mate it to this face here, and then we can continue on selecting this conical face here and its matching face from within the component. And we can see that mating using that style of mating is a lot easier. Another new option for 2016 is a new tool on the right click called Purge Unused Features. So what this tool will do is it will look at all the configurations available within the assembly and any suppressed components that are suppressed in all configurations and presume that we can delete those. So it does give us a confirmation about this at the top. It will also look at any unused sketches and reference geometry towards the bottom. So it's a really nice way to keep your configurations in your assembly model streamlined. If we open this component in its own window, we can see that the purge unused features is also usable at part level as well. So again, it's going to look at each of the configurations in the part and any features that are suppressed in all configurations. And again, look at any reference geometry uh, that is unused in all configurations. If we switch back to our main assembly and we take a look at some improvements for toolbox in this release. So over on the right hand side we can access our toolbox and it does contain a wealth of information from a number of different standards. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult to grab the items that you want so they've introduced a favourites folder for us. You can also create other folders within the favourites folder and adding components to that folder is easy as grabbing hold of the item that you want and dropping it into the favourites folder. It's then available to us to use in our assembly. So here we're just going to drag a nut and place it into position, or a bolt, sorry. And we'll just set our length here and we'll place another couple of instances as well. Each of these in instances is controlled individually. However, if you wanted to change the size of these collectively in previous releases of SOLIDWORKS, it wasn't possible. 
New for 2016, if we control select the elements and then drag out our change of size arrow at the end of the bolt, you'll see each of the three components that we've selected has the ability to change the size. This also applies to the type of fastener as well, so making it much quicker to modify those toolbox components. So, we've seen the introduction of the temporary fix component tool on the right click menu, the expansion of the quick make toolbar with support for symmetric width and profile centre mates, the ability to globally replace failed mate references. We can now choose configurations during adding components. We've got the selection improvements in the mate command with the transparent parts. We can copy multiple components and retain the mates. We've seen a new component preview window. We've also seen the ability to re rename components in the Feature Manager. You can remove all appearances from the assembly, which we didn't look at. You can also open the sub-assembly from the graphics area. And we also saw the ability to purge any unused components or features from part or assembly level. Within Toolbox, we saw the introduction of an Add Favorites folder, and also the ability to edit multiple Toolbox components at the same time.